Hello, and in this tutorial, what we're going to do is uh, actually now create a texture for this, uh, uh, the uh, digger bucket, um, uh, using Photoshop. So what we need to do now is grab this UV and basically export it into Photoshop. So the way that we do that is we select this object, uh, sorry, so we select the bucket in object mode. And then what we do is in this window, in the UV texture editor, we go... Um, uh, image uh, create PSD network and what this will do is it will create a Photoshop file for our um, uh, uh, it will create a Photoshop file with this uh, UV uh, in a uh, texture layer okay or the UV shells in a texture layer and the key thing is we need to select the as uh, the size that we're going to use notice that the size of the texture uh, is always in uh, uh, multiples of two or, or to the power of two, okay? Um, or, uh, yeah, sorry, two to the power of a, a particular number, okay? So, um, uh, yeah, so uh, I'm just going to select the highest resolution. And the other thing we need to do is we need to select what attribute that we, we are going to create a UV map, map for. So I'm going to create a UV map for color, okay? Keeping in mind uh, that we can actually create um, uh, UV maps for lots of other things as well. So it might be that once you've done your color, it might be that uh, in terms of areas of color, there will be areas that are uh, that might reflect specular light, uh, that might have bumps that relate to that color map, okay, as well. So, you, so once you've done the color, you can come back in and do these other layers as well, okay. Uh, I'm then going to go and, and obviously we need to select the UV set map we're going to use, which is map one, because we've only got map one, okay. And then I'm just going to go create, all right. Uh, that will create the Photoshop file for us and uh, open it up, okay. So here we are. Uh, just to show you, uh, I'm just going to pull this up. Uh, let's have a look, UV2 Pro. So in the source images, you can see it's just created this Photoshop file for us. And that's what we're working on in here. Okay. I'm just going to open up the layers. So I'm going to go view, uh, so look, window layers. Ooh, the layer window is open. Oh, sorry, let me just bring in the history window. It's just open on a different machine. That's all. Let's try it again. Okay. I'm just going to bring it across. Okay, so uh, yeah, here's the layer view. Now, I'm I'm not actually going to use this um, UV checker that we've put in. This is just this was purely for me to see how the UV map was uh, unfolding. We've done that process now, so I'm going to turn that off. But in effect, what I'm going to do is add new layers into this layer here. Now, one of the first things we want to do is because. Um, we're going to be, you know, I want my digger to be yellow because that is the sort of standard digger JCV color. Uh, but the UV map here is showing up yellow as well. So to make sure that I, um, whatever color I put into this UV uh, texture, that I, I end up with a consistent uh, result. Uh, what I want to do, uh, or I, I, sorry, not a consistent result, but I can still see, I want to still see the, the UV map. Uh, a good thing to do is to change this layer. So this is the layer with the shells on it change that to difference. I'll find it in a minute. There we go. So that just allows it to contrast with whatever texture that we're creating. Now I'm going to create a new texture. Oops, sorry, I don't want a new folder. I want to create a new layer. And we're going to obviously, I've got to create my texture in here, in this area here, okay? Or in this layer here, i.e. In underneath the uh, UV overlay color, okay? Uh, folder, or inside the UV overlay uh, color folder. If I just select the entire image uh, and with that layer uh, highlighted, what I can do is select uh, the bucket tool and uh, fill in our uh, uh, texture with, a, with a, a, a color. I've already selected a yellow as a sort of starting point. Now, just to show you that this is working and this is updating, what I'm going to do is go File, Save. Um, sorry, here we go. Here we go, Save. And then what I'm going to do is go back into Maya, and then I can just go, um, if I just turn off my attribute editor, uh, sorry, and it just gives us a bit more space now. If I go into um, object mode and select this, uh, and then I just click on, you can see it's already actually updated to yellow in here, okay, uh, be it a dimmed yellow, okay, because we, we've just got uh, dim there. Uh, but if I go into uh, image update PSD network, 
Okay, you'll see that it then updates in this view here. So we can effectively kind of work almost kind of in real time between Photoshop and Maya uh, onto this texture. Okay. Now, um, inside here, we've got some various textures that we can, uh, or, or a few textures that we can use. I go onto the internet and search for textures. There's lots of places you can go to to find textures, but if you just go into Google, Google and just search for things like uh, rust, for example, or metal. Um, uh, you can get all sorts of, um, uh, yeah, you can you know pick up all sorts of textures that you might want to use. Okay. Um, so I search for sort of scratched metal and I've got some various sort of surfaces that, that, that are going to be useful to me. So what I'm going to do is just drag this scratched metal uh, surface into here. Okay. And initially, what I want to do is just scale this. So I, what I'm going to do is, is use this for the inside or use this for the, the bucket area. OK, keep in mind, this is the extreme end of the bucket area. So what I'm going to do is uh, I want that bit to have a bit more sort of scratches on it. OK, so I'm just going to zoom this up. Also, you want to make sure your texture files are reasonably have got quite a good resolution to them as well. OK, so if we zoom this up, I'll probably zoom this up a bit too far. OK. Uh, and what I'm going to do is just scale this. So if I go place, and I'm just going to go and scale this. Uh, so that's actual pixels, uh, but I want to do fit to screen here. Great. OK. Um, now then, uh, what I want to do is just position this. But what I'm going to do is use this bit where it's kind of rough at the end here. I'm going to use that to kind of be the uh, the end of the bucket here okay so that will be uh yeah so that will be either end of this so what i want to do is grab that kind of just position it a little bit here we go okay that should do it okay and then what i might do is um i might just use um uh, uh a gradient fill to kind of gradient this this out a little bit. Um, so in order to do that, at the moment this is kind of in as as a smart object, which I don't really want. Uh, so what I'm going to do is rasterize that layer. So that now is a normal layer. Okay. Um, next thing I'm going to do is uh, I think I'm going to just go and grab. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to. Grab uh, a bit of the image here. I might just grab a different bit of the image, so just so so it looks slightly different, okay? Uh, and then what I'm going to do is go Control C and Control V, okay? So that'll create a new layer with this bit of the image on it. And then what I'm going to do is just use the Transform tool just to transform it, okay? So I'm going to go Layer. Uh, let's have a look. Um, image transform, and I should just be able to flip vertical. That'll do. Yeah, great. Okay, and then I can kind of put this bit of the image here. Okay, uh, again, just lining up that with the UVs uh, that I want. Okay. Now what I want to do is I don't really want this spreading across the whole um, uh, image. I only want it to texture the inside of the bucket. So I'm just going to grab uh, this bit here. OK. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is, is just invert that selection. So invert. And then with this layer selected, just go delete. So we're back to, to, to what we've got here. Now, there's a few things that I kind of need to correct on this. Uh, again, I'm just going to isolate little bits here. So I've got my bits of the image. Let's just isolate uh, this bottom bit here. So there's a few sort of artifacts in here that we want to kind of look at. Um, what I might do is just zoom that in just so you can kind of see that in a bit more detail. OK, so you can see there's a few artifacts. And before I start sort of blending this in, um, it's probably a good idea to kind of uh, sort of correct this, uh, these these sort of artifacts a little bit. OK, um, again, it's just obviously a ridge in the metal that, that, that is there. OK, and what I might also do is just turn off this uh, overlay just so I can get a bit clearer view of what I'm doing. Now, in order to work on this, I need to just uh, remove my selection. So I'm going to go deselect. And then what I'm going to do is use the clone stamp tool. Uh, 
uh, let's make sure I've got it right, the clone tool here. Uh, I did try the content aware fill, but it didn't seem to work. But you're more than welcome to give it a go. And if you've got a newer version of Photoshop than I have, I'm using CS5 here, uh, then it might work a little bit better. OK, so I'm going to go um, control. Uh, so I'm just going to go alt to select an area. Oh, hang on. Again, let's go alt to select an area and then just start sort of painting it in. In fact, what I might do is, yeah, so it's kind of going sort of diagonally, just painting it in. Uh, and also I, what I can do is just in my options, just soften the tool a little bit. I can pick the hardness I want. That, that looks about right. OK. Don't worry about going over the edges. That's fine. Uh, and then again, what I want to do is just select. Uh, press Alt again. Oh, hang on. Go back to the clone stamp tool. Press Alt again. And then just cover that up. So that's fine. That's just sort of covered that area up a little bit. And there's some more sort of little bits just there as well. Let's have a look at if there's any other bits on the image that we want to look at. I think that seems to be fine. OK, so that layer is done. Let's have a look at the other layer. So again, we've got a similar problem here. So again, I'm just going to use uh, uh, the clone stamp tool. So I'm going to obviously I need to work, change the layer that I'm working on as well, uh, not just view it. OK, so I'm going to go there and then just kind of bring that in there. In fact, actually, it's not going to work. Let's do it again. Yeah, that seems to be do the trick. OK, so that's got rid of that as well. And I think let's have a look. I've got any other issues? So that's looking good. OK, so we've cleaned that up. Um, it's good to clean it up now, those sort of issues, because they, they do get hard to sort of clean up uh, later on. OK, now what we want to do is we've got a bit of an issue here. We want to kind of sort of blend these into each other. In fact, really what I'm thinking is, is I don't want um, uh, I, I don't really need it to be um, uh, hugely scratched in the middle anyway. So I'm thinking I want these scratches to kind of fade really um so what i'm going to do is i think what i'm going to do is combine these uh shall i combine them just yet no what i'm going to do is um create a um a mask and then use gradients to kind of uh is to kind of use a gradient to kind of gradient uh, uh gradient this out okay so i'm going to go layer uh, let's have a look. I'm looking for layer mask, and what we'll do is we'll have a reveal all, okay? And then what I want to do is, so I've got this. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do. I'm going to then select the gradient tool, okay? And I should be able to just draw in a gradient. Here we go, okay? In fact, I'm going to go the other way, okay? I don't want it to kind of vanish quite like that. That's a bit extreme, okay? And what will also be useful at this point is also to switch on this. UV layer, so I can get an idea of what I'm working with. I probably want some scratches all the way through this, so to be to be fair, so I'm probably going to just kind of do something like that, so they kind of cross over each other. That looks good. And then what I'm going to do is do the same thing with the other layer. So let's bring that in, uh, select that layer, and I'm going to go layer mask, reveal all, and again use the gradient tool to kind of gradiate that out. Uh, again, probably. So they kind of cross over each other. In fact, I kind of want that to fade out a little bit more than that, I think. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's looking good. OK. Um, OK, great. And then let's put on this sort of layer on the background. So now what we've got is we've got our scratches and we've got our um, uh, yellow, uh, which is the main colour. Obviously, we don't really want the actual metal to be um, uh, to be grey. So what we can do is just, um, oh, in fact, before we do that, uh, what we can do is, is multiply this layer with the yellow layer. But before we do that, what we want to do is take these two layers that make up this area and just combine them into one. OK, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go merge layers. OK, so that's all merged into one layer now. OK, and then what I'm going to do is just change the blend mode to multiply. So you can see what's happening is multiplying this yellow by the actual uh, grey. So having an image that's grey or black and white allows you to use this multiply and, and uh, uh, so you only get really the sort of texture of it, which is what we want, rather than the colour of it. Uh, I suppose other options you could look at are overlay that might work in some cases. 
uh, but we'll stick with or, or uh, perhaps darken uh, that you may want to use. So there are other sort of options that you can look at as well. Uh, maybe let's have a look at color burn, see what happens there. Not quite what we want. Okay, so I'm going to select, stick with multiply. What we might also want to do is do a slight adjustment on that layer as well. Uh, so I'm going to go adjustment. Uh, levels. I'm going to adjust the levels here because I might want this to, this This will allow me to kind of really bring out the scratches and things that I want in this. So what I'm going to do is bring up the contrast a little bit first of all. Okay. Uh, and then this really allows me to get sort of, you can see how this is sort of changing how this texture goes in and it allows me to really sort of pick out how I want these scratches to come in. So that's looking quite good. And then the final control I've got as well, Oh, in fact, sorry, I didn't want to get rid of that. Let's just do that again. Slight error in my use of the tool there. Okay. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is click OK. And then finally, what I'm going to do, the final control I have is the opacity. I can obviously uh, 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 affect the uh, opacity of this as well. Okay. So let's get an idea of what this is doing now. So if I go File, Save, I can then go back into Maya and click uh, go back into Maya and obviously I need to go back into the UV texture editor here and go uh, image update PSD network and you can see that's come in there and you can see that our scratches are coming in quite nicely here onto our bucket and you can see they kind of fade out towards the back great okay um, I don't know if I want my scratches to kind of look black I might want my scratches to kind of look rusty OK, so what I'm going to do is, again, come into Photoshop and in my layers, let's bring my layers back up again, uh, layers, OK. I'm going to bring in a rust image now, OK. Uh, again, I need to zoom this up, so I might need to do, uh, in fact, let's continue doing our placing first. Again, just going to hold shift so that this does place without uh, altering the aspect ratio of this. Fabulous. Great. OK. Um, excellent. OK, so that's our rust layer. Uh, then what I'm going to do is just press return there. Uh, just I could do with trying to dock these, actually. Let's see if I can dock them. Yeah, that'll do it. Something like that. Dock that up there. That's great. Okay, that should make things work a little bit better. Okay, so here's here's the rust in there. Now what I want to do is uh, change this rust to uh, uh, an overlay layer. So I'm going to use uh, let's have a look. Use overlay. So now by changing this to an overlay, you can see that the rust just appears where it's dark. Uh, on this on this uh, layer three there, so they're kind of working together these layers to create a more sort of rust sort of pattern to, to what we need. So you can see how we can combine textures to get what we want. Okay, again, let's have a look what we've got here. File save. Uh, let's go to Maya, and again, let's update the PSD network. Okay, and let's have a look at this. Okay, so I think this is giving us a sort of more effective result. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to sort of have a look at um, this side bit as well. Okay, I'm not going to do the whole bucket because that'll probably take a while, but I'm going to sort of give you, you know, this is giving you a starting point and so you can move on with it. Uh, in order for me to work out what shell, because obviously I've got a couple of shells in here that look very similar, to work out which shell is doing what, uh, what I want to do is in here, if I go into uh, UV shell and select that, I can tell it's that shell there. So that's the shell that I want to work on inside of uh, Photoshop. Let's go into Photoshop. Here we go. So I want to work on this shell here. OK, so I don't want this to have sort of the type of scratches that we had here, which is kind of thinking that it's digging and that, that you know, the front bit's got more scratches on it. I want it to have the sort of scratches uh, sort of pock marks and kind of general rusty sort of scratches that you might get. So I, I've got a different sort of type of scratches that I'm going to use. So um, it's going to be these ones here, and I'm just going to drag uh, drag this on to the screen uh, so you can see it. Okay. 
Let's bring this in. Ooh. Okay. I want this to kind of cover, go over the. Uh, that's looking good. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And if I wanted to, I could just rotate this a little bit. Uh, I might just do that, actually. Just rotate it a little bit. There we go. Uh, tell us how I want this text to line up with it. Let's go Enter. Obviously, what I don't want is I don't need these bits that are interfering with the, uh, uh, which are interfering with the other uh, shells. So all I'm going to do is just use the uh, Polygon Lasso tool here. And all I need to do is a very rough selection around the outside. It doesn't need to be accurate in any way just around the edge here and obviously so I can cut between the two objects uh, so a look uh, I think if I go enter now yep and then what I want to do is just go select invert the selection and then I want to delete that in order to delete that I am going to have to change that to a rasterized layer okay and I can go and delete that okay what I can also do is if I put this underneath the rust layer again okay I'll get a similar effect to what we got with this uh, before, uh, with this here, where 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 this is sort of making the black areas rusty, which is great. Okay, and obviously remember the rust layer actually fills the entire uh, uh, this entire UV map, so that's uh, so that's already there for us to use. Great. Now what I want to do is um, in this layer I want to select I want to select um, probably want to select again multiply okay so I've got this sort of multiply effect going on and again I can go into the uh, layer uh, adjustments so levels oh hang on cancel I don't want to do an adjustment layer uh, I want to do I want to do it as image adjustments levels and again I can kind of look and decide you know I can up the contrast of this if I want to make this a bit more contrasty he says, ah, sorry, that's not working because at the moment uh, I'm actually, I've got the area where the image isn't there selected. I need to actually just go and go deselect, then apply that. So again, I go adjustments, levels, and now I should be able to kind of adjust those levels again. So I can make those scratches a bit more intense. I might just want to just pull out those, those scratches there. So it just kind of comes in a little bit more like that. That's looking much better. That's exactly what I want there. Okay, uh, so I can kind of refine how this texture looks. That's looking good. Okay. Um, okay, so again, I'm going to go file, save. Okay, and let's have a look how that looks on the in Maya. Okay, uh, so again, textures or image, uh, update PSD network. Let's have a look how this looks in here. Okay, so that's looking good. Um, In fact, if I just go into object mode, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah, OK. And we can see the whole thing. That's looking good. What I want to do is just try to find some way of blending this texture into this texture. OK, so obviously what we're looking at here is in Photoshop is we're looking at this bottom edge of the texture here. Um, probably let's think about this. Um, uh, an easy way of doing this would be to grab a copy of this image. So I'm just going to solo this image and I'm going to grab a copy of this image. Go control C or literally just copy this bit of it here. Let's copy that bit there. Control C, control and then uh, and then go control V to create a new version of that and then move that to here okay and then what I want to do is just look at that and look at that okay um, and what I might also do is just apply this as uh, darken again okay 
So again, I'm just going to change the color mode of this layer. It's also useful to actually uh, label these layers up because you can imagine it gets a bit complicated to know which bit is which, okay? Uh, and lock them as well. So for example, you know, we're happy with this. So we could lock this layer. Uh, uh, if I can remember how to do that. So look, uh, merge. I think it might be an option that's down the bottom and I can't get to it. So we'll leave that then. Okay, but yeah, you could lock that layer. Uh, oh, uh, there we go. In fact, here we go, making it difficult. There we are. So I can lock that layer there. Okay. Then what I want to do is uh, on the inside scratches or on this layer, I'm probably going to go multiply. Let's have a look how that looks. Okay, so I can see them together. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine these two layers. And the reason for combining them is so that I can clone this bit of the Im image onto that bit of the image. Then I'll remove this. Okay. So I'm just going to clone this. Uh, image, uh, let's have a look, uh, so I'm just going to go, sorry, right click, merge the layers, okay, uh, and that's great, it, it's created a normal layer, but I'm going to keep it on normal for the moment, and then we'll go, we'll switch it back to multiply in a bit, okay, great, now what I'm going to do is uh, use the clone tool, uh, in fact, what I might also do is is before I merge them, or what I might do is just grab this bit of the image and just go edit. Uh, free transform. And what I'm going to do is just move it on its side, just so it kind of, when I start cloning it, it kind of then better aligns with, um, uh, it better aligns with the, um, uh, with where I want the scratches to be on this object here. Hopefully it will make sense when I start doing it. Let's just continue rotating it. Okay, so let's press enter. So now when I use the clone tool, again, I'm going to go select, deselect. I should get rid of that. Uh, so when I use the clone tool, I want to clone this area here. So I'm going to go Alt. Okay, and then start painting that in there. I probably want it to be really quite soft, so I'm going to try and make it as soft as I can. Uh, okay, let's have a look how that looks. So that's probably a little bit too dark. So what I might do is just select. So you can see where I want it less dark, I can kind of just select it there just to kind of compensate for it a little bit. That's looking good. Yeah, okay. So I can kind of select how dark I want it. Uh, uh, that little bit. The other thing I can do as well is I can use the um, uh, uh, I can actually use the the burn tool here as well, and just kind of make the image a bit darker. So I can kind of burn that in. So look. Uh, doesn't seem to be doing a whole lot. So I can make that part of the image a little bit darker. Let's have a look how that looks now. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, just quickly switch that back into multiply. OK, and then obviously uh, I want to turn my rust layer back on uh, and then I'm going to file save. Uh, yeah, let's have a look how that looks. Back into Maya. Update the PSD networks. So textures, panels, uh, sorry, images. Update PSD network. In fact, what I need to do is select the object first and then go update PSD network. In fact, it might have already updated, but let's have a look. OK, and I think it has updated it there. So you can see that the scratches are coming in here and this is blending in a lot better. We still need to do some work at the top end edge of this, but you can see where this is sort of all sort of starting to come together and work uh, work a bit more now. Um, so what I might want to do is just go back into here again. In order for my clone tool to kind of work in the way that I want, I kind of need to select the area that I want and then kind of clone it in. So it looks make sure I'm working in the right area. Uh, use the clone tool, 
not sure why the burn doesn't work. It worked very well last time, but this this time didn't seem to work so well. Uh, okay, let's use my clone tool. Just add a little bit more, some scrapes on the back here. Just kind of make that a bit darker. Again, just need to add that bit of detail. Might be a bit too dark, that one, actually. Again, I tend to keep the history on to sort of help me kind of work with this and get the result that I want. Uh, again, this is probably, I probably want this to be quite faint at the top there. Let's try that. Save back into Maya. Uh, again, select this in object mode, image, uh, update PSD network. Yeah, that's starting to look a bit better and, it, and it's starting to sort of improve things a little bit as well. Okay, so you can see how we, we can. Uh, use this to kind of develop our textures uh, as we need to okay obviously there's a bit of textures going on to this side as well and we can easily go and delete that if we need to as well okay and um, so that's obviously just where uh, this bit of the texture is already on there we can obviously just go in here and delete that again I'm just going to use the polygon lasso tool to do that because we don't need that bit there okay Right, um, so I'm going to leave the texturing there, but I'm going to, uh, and then what I'm going to do is just leave you to kind of take all this uh, a little bit further. Again, one of the key things to keep in mind with texturing, I'll just render this out so you can kind of see what it's looking like when we render it, okay? One of the things to keep in mind when you're texturing is, uh, you know, how close is this to, um, to the camera? How much detail is this going to be seen in? Okay, because obviously you can spend a lot of time refining textures and you really need to spend time refining textures where you need to, i.e. you've on, on objects that are very close uh, uh, to the camera. Okay, obviously where the stuff is far away, you don't need to spend so much time uh, on the textures. Okay, uh, thank you for following this tutorial.